So happy Saturday, y'all, and uh, Shabbat Shalom. So um, this is in affiliation with Freedom in Christ Ministries and the Revolt Podcast, uh, which is my husband's page. Uh, go ahead and check it out on YouTube. It's Freedom in Christ Ministries backslash the Revolt. Um, and our website on Facebook is called Freedom in Christ Ministries. Uh, a little bit about our ministry is that we're not like normal ministries. Um, we do the commission of the casting out of demons. Now, a lot of people kind of debate us thinking that thinking and saying that a Christian cannot have a demon, but according to Jesus, deliverance is the children's bread. So, um, it is possible. The Bible has it all through it. So, but that's going to be another video. So, um, just, that's just a little background of who we are. And, um, I apologize for not being on in a while. There's a lot going on, but I also realize that that's not an excuse. So I just want to remind you that no matter how busy your life gets, that you need to find the time to spend with the Lord and you need to find the time to do what he tells you to do. You can't go around saying, oh, I'm too busy. You need to stop what you're doing. You need to be interruptible, as uh, I've heard sometimes from a pastor a long time ago, that we need to be interruptible. You know, no matter what we're doing, if God says stop and do something, we need to stop and do it. So um, anyway... The good news about what's been going on is through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and for from my friend Didi, who also does this, uh, I have been impressed to start a Bible study text group, which is pretty cool because with this text group, women from all over can be a part of it. And um, my friend Didi actually has two of them going on, which is actually amazing and it's really cool. Um, it's basically daily readings and we go through them we go through the books very slowly so we can actually get some meat so for the past seven weeks um i decided to go through the book of john with my group because there is a lot of new believers and a lot of people who have been in the faith but yet they are just they're really being impressed to really study out the Word of God and to really get closer to the Lord. So what better way to do it is to go through the book of John and get to know, you know, who who Jesus was or, excuse me, is. So um, today was the last day of the book of John. It's been seven weeks. I am so grateful to the Lord for allowing me to head this up. And as I was reading today's portion, which was um, John chapter 21, verses 15 through 25 that was today's portion and I was I was reading this portion it's just um the Lord impressed on me to do a video and to share with y'all about it so we're going to read 15 through 17 first and then there's one more verse after that that we're going to go through but was you know first things first so um let's just ask the Lord to lead us and guide us and to open our ears and our eyes to what he wants to tell us and to what he wants to relay to us individually and corporately. So uh, let's go ahead and go to 15 through 17. This is John chapter 21, by the way, if you all want to open your Bibles and read along, that's pretty cool. So uh, it says, So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. So I know that you know a lot of people get, through di get different things through these three verses, okay? But what stood out to me was the word love here. Um, and another thing that actually really stood out to me was how Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? But it kind of correlates to how Peter denied Jesus three times. So, I mean, I don't know, that just stood out to me. But anyway, so if you notice here, the first two times, Jesus says, do you love me more than these? And then Jesus asked him again, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, the word love here is not like an emotional love, okay? Um, in the Greek, it's agapeo, 
Okay, and the word agapeo in Greek actually means um, an unconditional and sacrificial love to the point like, you know, how God loves us, you know, to the point where he sacrificed his son for us. It's a sacrificial love. It has nothing to do with your emotions, but it has to do with your will. It has to do with your will and what you will do. And Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandments, which is... It has to do with the agapeo kind of love because the agapeo love is more like a willful love do my commandments so it's an action it's a word of action the agapeo is loving to the point of acting on it to the point where you do something sacrificially for god and then but what Peter thinks he's saying is the word phileo which is more like an emotional love it's run by your emotions and and how you feel it's two totally different loves but if you notice in the third in the third one in chapter 17 when Jesus asks or in verse 17 when Jesus asks do you love me he's saying the phileo part this time he's saying do you do you love me emotionally and Peter's like well yeah you know all things but Peter gets frustrated he's like why does he keep asking me this but it's two different kinds of love and Peter gets frustrated. He's like, Lord, you know all things. So obviously Jesus knows how Peter feels, you know, and he knows his reaction and he knows what's going to happen, but he still asks him. And that's kind of what a relationship with God is. But let's go back to the love part. Okay. Now with the love, with the agapeo love, how do you love God? Do you love him agapeo or do you love him phileo? You know, because when when I see people in churches and they're like, oh, I love God, I love God, I love God. I just want to ask, I just want to be like, okay, well, how do you love God? Do you love God to emotional where you cry and you just want to hug him and kiss him? Or do you love him to the point where if he tells you to do something when you feel so uncomfortable with doing it, because usually that's what he does. He'll ask us to do stuff that he knows that we're going to feel uncomfortable doing. Do you love me so much that if I tell you to do this, are you going to do it sacrificially? Are you going to do it sacrificially and unconditionally? Or are you going to say, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But like Jesus, Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. He even asked God to take the cup of wrath from him. But then he goes on and says, not your will, but my, um, not my will, but your will be done. And he went and did it anyway, sacrificially and unconditionally. Agapeo. That's what he did for his father was agapeo. Do you feel agapeo or phileo love for God and for Jesus? Do you want to do what he wants you to do no matter what he tells you to do? There's things where he's told me to do and I'm like, uh, no, I don't, I don't, I know, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do that. And then he just keeps impressing it and pressing it and pressing it and pressing it. I mean, until I, until I find, fine, I'll do it. And then I do it and it's just like this well done, good and faithful servant kind of thing. And it's not like a prideful thing where you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I did it. It's more like a, okay. I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because no matter what God tells you to do, if you do it unconditionally and sacrificially, he's going to honor that. And he's going to understand that you don't want to do it, but he's going to bring you through to do it. He's going to allow you to do it. Now with the phileo love, yes, we can love him with the phileo love as well. We can love him with an emotional love to the point where where we weep and we cry about how much we love him and we are grateful for his unconditional and sacrificial love for us. But how do you love God? I want you to stop and think today about how you love God. Do you love him agapeo or do you love him phileo? If he tells you to drop all that you're doing and go downtown and stand on a corner with a sign telling people to repent and believe, are you gonna do that? Are you gonna be like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't know what people will think of me. I don't want people spitting on me. I don't want people yelling at me. Well, you really think Jesus enjoyed people yelling at him and spitting on him? But he did what he was told to do through agapeo love. If God tells you to stop and drop everything and spend all that you have, like Paul tells the, the rich man, are you going to do that and drop everything that you have and sell everything that you have and go to Africa or even 
go to Detroit because Detroit is like worse. It's so bad right now. Or are you going to say, oh, I don't want to sell my boat. Or, oh, I don't want to leave my house. I just acquired all of this stuff. Word to the wise, all that stuff is going to burn anyway. And do you want to burn along with it because you don't want to obey God? Because you want to sit in your comfortable little house or your comfortable little chair in church on Sunday and just do, check off your list of, oh, went to church today. Oh, I tied, I tied my 10% today. And, and go on the rest of the week doing what you want to do, but not even trying to listen to the voice of God. Because if that's the case, then what are you doing for God? Are you obeying his commands? Because every word that comes out of Jesus' mouth is a command. It's not just those 10 little things on a tablet. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a command. Everything that he says to do is a command. Okay? For instance, in Mark 16, verses 17, he says, These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will heal the sick. And even in Matthew 28, he does a great commission. He says, now go into all the world and baptize and preach the gospel. That's not on those 10. That's not on those two little tablets that, that God wrote with his finger. Those are also commands. So if you love as in agape or agapeo love, you will do those things unconditionally and sacrificially. You will not sit there and you will not be like, oh, I love you, God. I just want to hug you. No, that's not the kind of love God really, really requires. He wants the agapeo, sacrificial, unconditional love for him. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to drop, excuse me, everything and just say, okay, God, I'm yours. Because he created you anyway, from your head to your toe. He created you anyway. You need to dedicate yourself and sacrifice yourself for the kingdom. Sacrifice yourself for God and for what he wants to do, for how he wants to advance his kingdom. Are you willing to do the agapeo part? unconditional and sacrificial to do what he wants you to do. Do you love God that much that you actually die for him? A lot of people say, oh yeah, 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 you know, I, I would die for God. But when the time comes down to it, if if they, the people who are wanting to kill you, are standing there with a knife to your kid's throat and telling you to renounce Jesus or else they're going to slice your kid's throat open, are you, are you really going to say... No, I'm not going to renounce God or no, I'm not going to renounce God or are you, you going to freak out and be like, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to renounce God. Don't kill my kid. Even with you, when, when you're laying there with the guillotine or when you're about to be burned to death, are you going to renounce God or are you going to do your agapeo love and be like, you know what? I know where I'm going anyway. I have to think about these things. I have to think about these things too. It's, I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir here, y'all. Because there's times where I sit there and I think, okay, if they sit there with a gun to my kid's head and tell me to renounce Jesus or they're going to blow her or his head off because I have two children, what am I really going to say? Am I really, really going to say, no, I'm not going to renounce Christ? Am I really going to say that? Because now I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. And then I think of Abraham. Um, and I think of Abraham of how God promised through through Isaac that you know, he would be the father of many nations. But yet, you know, Abraham was was hesitant about Isaac. But then he finally said, okay, you know what? You promised through this kid that I am going to be the father of many nations. So it's either you're going to provide another sacrifice or you're going to bring him back to life. That's trust and that's faith. Do we have that as well? Do we have the agape of love to trust and have the faith in the Lord like that? Like I said, I got to think about that all the time. I just want you to sit and think about, think that today and sit there and really take some time to pray and ask God to allow you to have that agapeo love for him, that unconditional sacrificial love, not just the emotional love, which is cool. Yeah, of course you, you have to emotionally love God. You know, there's times where I ask Jesus, Lord, I just need a hug. I just need a hug from you. That's all I need, please. Because there's times where I'm just like so down and I don't know what to do. I feel like stuck. Like there's times like right now, we're, we're, me and my husband are at like a standstill. Okay. We're trying to move and there's so many things that we, that we want to do, that we want to do. And we keep asking God, you know, Lord, we want to do this. We want to do that. But then we have to remind ourselves that it's all in his timing. And do we love him enough to just sit right where we are and deal with what's going on right now until he tells us to move. And at this point, the answer is yes. 
at this point, I have the agape of love to just sit here and just take it, whatever is given to me, and just wait on God. Um, a friend of mine shared with me a meme today that um, has a man looking around the corner and it says, it says me, me checking on the things that I left in God's hands. And then on the bottom, it says, it says, Hey, it's just me again, checking on the status. It's just like, you know, we put stuff in God's hands, but then we have to go back and check on it. I do it all the time. If we put something in God's hands, we should know that it's better in his hands than ours. It is a lot better in his hands than ours. So we should just put it in God's hands and be like, you know what? You know better than I do. So I'm just going to walk away from it. But how often do we, do we run back there and think that we can take it ourselves? Do we have the agape and the sacrificial and the unconditional love to just leave it at, leave it in his hands and walk away? These are things that I want you to think about today. These are things that I need you to think about today. Please think about these things, okay? The agapeo and the phileo. Agapeo means unconditional sacrificial love like God loves us. Do we love God like God loves us? That's the number one question, okay? Now, here's another, the other verse that stuck out was verse 22. It says, Jesus said to him, if I want, this is where, this is when um, Peter and Jesus are, are, are walking and Peter turns around and looks at, it says the disciple whom Jesus loved. Okay. And it says, it says, so Peter seeing him said, this is verse 21. We're going to go up a couple verses. So we're going to start at 20. Peter turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. The one who also had leaned back on his bosom at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? So Peter seeing him said to Jesus, well, Lord, well, what about this man? It's like, well, what about that dude? Right? This, this just blows my mind. And I must have read this verse, I don't know how many times, right? And today it's just like, it just, you know, it's just that the words just came up off the page and left the other ones blurry. Does that ever happen to you? Really cool. Anyway, Jesus said to him, if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Now, this is crazy because it's basically, you know, Jesus basically telling him, stop worrying about what I want him to do. Stop worrying about what I want him to do. Stop worrying about what I want her to do. Stop worrying about what that person's doing. Stop worrying about what that person is doing. You follow me. You do what I tell you to do. That's that's another thing. How how often are we are we looking at other people and their ministries or what their or what their lives and be like, well, oh man, I want to do what they're doing for God. You know, I want to be like that for God. I want to do what they're doing. I want to be up on the pulpit. I, even though ladies, you know, you can't be, but unless you're speaking to all ladies, of course. Or or oh, you know, I want to have all, all all this money like that person and, and give it to God and give it to these missions and give it to these missionaries. I want to do that. But maybe that's not what God has you to do. Like for instance, me and my husband, you know, he's given us this deliverance ministry, you know, and right now it's just like it's just we're we're sitting and waiting, you know, because we're not telling people to go out and 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 search for demons, you know what I mean? We're you know because if if that's the case, we're gonna see demons and everybody. Like, oh, you know, if 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 somebody gets like angry at us for a second, oh, a spirit of anger, come out in Jesus' name. No, it's not like that, you know. It's God brings the lost, just like in the Bible, you know. Jesus says, "Those who God has given me." Or I've chosen you. You have not chosen me. That's they're led by the Holy Spirit to Christ. Like with with our salvation, it is the Holy Spirit that leads us to Christ. It is the Holy Spirit that draws us to Him. Okay, it is not nothing that you're doing. It is nothing of your own volition. It is nothing of your own ways that you don't go to Christ. You would never go to Christ on your own. It's the Holy Spirit that draws you. But also is the Holy Spirit that draws and leads you to the work that God has for you, okay? Here it says, you follow me. Don't worry about what he's doing. Don't worry about what they're doing for me. That's their mission for me. I have this mission for you, and I will be glorified in this. Like, where I work, where I work, you know, um, it's crazy because there's times where I, I feel like my time there is done. You know, that, okay, I fulfilled my, my mission here at, at, at my job, and now it's time for me to move on. But then, like, the very next day, something happens in my job with, with, like, with a coworker or even with a customer, and it's God saying, no, 
I still need you here. There's people that need my light here and you are going to be the light in this darkness, in this place. You are going to draw people close to me through the Holy Spirit working in you. So I'm just like, okay, I'll do it. You know, and I, and there's times where I'll sit here like, wow, I want to do what that person's doing. I want that kind of ministry. But you know what? The ministry that, that God has given me and my husband and, um, and our team, Erica and Alan, it's just like, um, you know, we have to start with the little things first. We have to start going after, you know, the spirits in our own area first. And we have to, we have to pray against them. We have to pray against them. And so we're starting like that. And then eventually God will bring more and God will bring more and God will do more and we'll do more for God. But you know what? That comes back to the love part. Okay. Do we love God enough unconditionally and sacrificially to sit there and not focus on what everybody else is doing or focus on everybody else's ministry or focus on, on what everybody else is doing for God? Do we love God enough to sit and wait and trust in him that he knows best for us, that he knows the missions that he has for us, that we were created for a certain specific mission? I was created for it. You were created for it. My husband was created for it. My team was created for it. We're all created for a specific thing to bring glory to God and advance the Holy Kingdom. Don't focus on what everybody else is doing. Focus on what God has for you. And if you don't know what God has for you, pray about it. Take some time. Really, really take some time. 15, 20, 30 minutes and just... Get on your face. Don't sit there in a chair or unless you can't get on your face. You can't get on your knees. Get on your face and get on your knees and just ask God, Lord, what is it that you want me to do for you? We're here to serve him. He's not here to serve us. And in this and in, in this day and age in the Western church, it's got it's gotten confused. Like God's here to serve us. God's here to give what give us what we want. No. That's not what it is. That's a spirit of confusion. Okay? We are here to serve him. We are here to do what he wants. We are his soldiers, his warriors, and his missionaries. We are here to advance his kingdom. He's not here to advance our kingdom. This is not our kingdom. Our kingdom is with him. We are here for him. And how much love do you have to sit there and sit there and pray for 15, 20, 30 minutes on your face saying, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? I am here for you today. What is it that you want me to do? Father, he's your master. That's what it says. You know, you're his servant. That makes him your master. He, you are his child. That makes you, that makes him your father. You know what I mean? But either way, how much love do you have for him to say, okay, what is it that you want from me, Lord? Help me not focus on what everybody else is doing for the kingdom or period, what everybody else is doing, what everybody else even has. You know, like um, there's times where I'm driving down the road and, and I look at houses and I'm like, wow, that's a nice house. I'd like to have that house, you know? And I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know what? I don't care what everybody else has. Sometimes I do, and it gets to me. Yes, the enemy will, will creep in and be, be like, ooh, look at that house. I'd give you that house. But obviously your God isn't listening to you. You know, he's not answering your questions. He's not answering you. But that's when you need to tell the enemy to shut up because God's timing is perfect. And God will give us everything that we ask for, for his glory though. And in his name and in the name of his son, Jesus, we just have to be obedient. Keyword obedient to the point of sacrificial and unconditional love agapeo love for him to do what he wants now like i said if you don't know what he wants you to do get on your face and pray pray about it ask him say lord what is it that you want me to do the bible says if if, if your child asks you for a piece of bread are you going to give him a rock ask the lord lord what is it that you want me to do for you how may i serve you please leave me that's all you have to do. And you know what? Don't just say amen and get up and walk away. Actually have the discipline to sit there and wait and listen for his voice. Just listen for him. Listen for that, that leading within or even outside. I don't know. Maybe he'll talk to you like the burning bush. I don't know. You know, God talks to me in many different ways. He'll talk to me through his word. He'll talk to me with just like an inner voice and or he'll talk to me 
through other people or even a billboard. It's crazy how God will talk to you, but you have to ask God for the clarity and for the discernment and for the knowledge to seek out what he wants you to do. There's the gifts of the spirit. Paul tells us that we are to ask for those. If we ask for them, we're going to get them. So if we ask for the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of the wisdom to carry it out, he'll give it to us. But you have to be disciplined. You have to have the, the agapeo love for God to do what he tells you to do, unconditionally and sacrificially, without questioning. Do you really think your father is going to lead you into harm's way? He might, but you know what? He'll protect you. That's another thing. If God leads you somewhere, he'll empower you to do it. He's not going to lead you somewhere and not, and not empower you to do it. That makes no sense. How is that going to glorify him if you go on a mission for him and he fail and you fail? You're not going to fail. Because God is the one who's leading. The Holy Spirit is the one who's directing. So friends, today I just I just I don't know, I haven't done a video in a while and I was reading this and the Lord's like, it's time for a video. So I just want to encourage you, as well as my ladies in my group, because I know you're all going to watch this, to think about the agapeo love and the phileo love. What kind of love do you truly have for God? And if you know you don't have the agapeo, ask him for it. Say, Lord, help me to have that unconditional sacrificial love for you where I do everything and anything you tell me to do without wavering. And without having any doubt, because I know that anything that you bring me to do, that you will show me and you will empower me to finish it for your kingdom and for your glory. And also pray, Lord, do not let me focus on what everybody else is doing for you. Do not let me focus on that person right there. Let me focus on what you have for me to do for you, Lord. Help me to see that mission. Help me to see what, you, what it is that I am here to serve you for. Help me to advance your kingdom in the way that you want me to do it. Not what that person is doing. Or not what that person is doing. Or not what that person is doing. Help me, Lord, to do what you have called me to do. And if, Lord, and if I don't know my calling, please help me to see it. Granted, there is a calling for all of us. And that's in the Great Commission. We are all called to cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, preach the gospel, baptize. We're all called to do this. And if you say, oh, that's not my calling, that's not true because the Bible says these signs will follow those who believe. So if you believe, you're going to do that. Okay? And if you believe in, in Christ and if you follow Christ, you're going to preach the gospel, baptize. We are all called to do that. Granted, some of us are called towards a more specific ministry like us with the deliverance ministry or somebody with, the, um, with evangelizing or somebody leading a church or somebody leading missions, somebody feeding the homeless. But we're all called to do specific things. All of us are called to do specific things. But you can also ask God, what is my specific calling? What am, how can I serve you individually? And how can I serve you unconditionally and sacrificially? That's, I challenge y'all to do that this week. I challenge y'all to do that. I challenge y'all to do it every day, not just this week. Get on your face and pray and ask God to empower you to do what he has brought you to do. Whoo, that was good. Thank you, Lord. All right, everybody. I'm really hoping and praying that I don't have to wait so long for another video, but you know, I don't want to do videos on my own volition. I just want to do what he tells me to do when he tells me to do it. So I pray that y'all were edified through this. I pray you all have a wonderful week. And I pray that you all learn the unconditional sacrificial love on top of the phileo love, the emotional love that you have for God. Just be on fire. Ask God to light that fire and never let it out. Because I have this fire and I want it to just explode. That's how I want the fire in me to do. To be. And I pray that same thing for y'all. And everybody, stop taking the things out of God's hands. This is, I don't know who this is for, but stop taking the things out of God's hands. Thinking that you can handle it. That, oh, this is too difficult for God. The Bible says, is, not, is anything too difficult for me? No, nothing's too difficult for God. Ever. Give him the difficult things. Give him the easy things that you think you can't handle. Be like, you know what? I can't handle this right now. I'm going to put it in God's hands. And I'm not going to go back and take it out. 
I'm not going to go back and take it out because it's better in his hands than mine. Because my hands, I'll probably screw it up. So just, I challenge you that whatever you're going through, to put it in God's hands and God's hands alone and walk away from it. Don't lay it at the cross because the cross can't do anything, okay? Lay it at the feet of the one who died on the cross. Lay it at the feet of the one who created the one who died on the cross. Lay it at their feet because they can lean over and pick it up and just say, let me have it. Let me take care of this and walk away and just go on glorifying and praising, right? Praise the Lord. Glory to God forever and ever in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, y'all. Have a great day and have a great week.